arriving at St. George, St. George Station. Why is he going in? Hey everyone, it is Friday, February 5th. The time is 4.55 p.m. And the temperature outside is minus five degrees Celsius. Although with the wind chill, apparently it feels more like minus 14. This is St. George Station in downtown Toronto. And I'm about to head up to the Bedford Road exit. Hopefully it's not too cold once I get out. There's a look north up Bedford Road. And the plan for this one is to head down to Bloor Street West, which is just in front of me. And from there, I will walk east through the Mink Mile portion of the Yorkville neighborhood. And then I'll make my way over to Isabella Street. And that is on the east side of Young. And I'll walk along the entire length of Isabella. And I might explore around a bit once I'm on the east side of downtown and find my way into a subway station. There's a look west along Blur Street West. And now I'm walking east along the south side of Bloor Street. There's Varsity Stadium and a large dome over the plane surface. I was thinking of venturing a bit further away from the core today, but with the cold weather, I decided not to. I've recently gone out to Scarborough and Etobicoke to record some walks and live streams over the past week. And I'll probably do some more of that in the coming week. There's the Royal Conservatory of Music on the right. And it looks like they're doing some street work here along Bloor. And there's a look into the University of Toronto, that is Philosopher's Way. And the Michael Lee Chin Crystal, which sits atop, or rather on top and on the side of the Royal Ontario Museum. 
I'm not sure when they'll be reopened. And it looks like the Gabby's that used to be located next to McDonald's has gone under. That was a pub. That's a chain of pubs, actually. So the first part of this walk might be a little familiar if you watch the channel, although I can't ever recall walking down Isabella Street, at least not the entire length of it. So something old, something new. And this is Queens Park here. And that is the old Department of Household Science building, which is now home to a Club Monaco. There's a look south down Queens Park towards the Provincial Legislative Assembly building. And just beyond that, Queens Park turns into University Avenue and the famous Church of the Redeemer. On the north side here is Avenue Road. And now I am on the Mink Mile. This is a stretch of Bloor Street that runs between where I just was at Avenue Road and Queens Park to the west and Young Street to the east. It gets its name from being probably the highest end retail stretch in Canada. It's kind of our equivalent of Fifth Avenue in New York City or the Magnificent Mile in Chicago or Rodale Drive in LA. It's a lot of high-end retailers here. But there's also a, a fair bit of, I guess you could say, lower or middle-end retailers. There's a Winners and HomeSense. Winners is pretty much just like Marshalls if you're not familiar with it. There's also a Gap and an H&M. But along that side of the street, I've already walked by a Louis Vuitton, a Tiffany, a Burberry, and a Gucci store. Here's Cartier. I've mentioned this in prior videos, but I'm not particularly familiar with most of these brands. And apparently, per square foot, the retail space along this stretch of Bloor Street is the third most expensive in North America. And I think it generates the highest sales per square foot in Canada. There's an old pottery barn location. I don't know what they're going to do with that building. And just to the north of here is the Yorkville Village neighborhood. There's a Rolex store and a Hermes across the street. I first learned of that movie or that, that brand from a Japanese movie called Train Manor. Something along those lines. There's the look south down St. Thomas Street, and just to the south of here is Charles Street. So where I started was at St. George Station, which sits along Line 2 and Line 1. 
And just to the north here is Bay Station, which would be the next stop to the east from St. George. Then when I get to Young, there would be Blue Young Station, but I plan on heading south there down to Isabella Street. And I was mistaken, the gap is gone. They also recently closed up their Queen Street West store. I guess the gap has sort of fallen out of favor with a lot of people these days. There's the look south down Bay Street. It is 5.05, so there's about 25 minutes of daylight left. The days are getting longer. It might have been neat to do this walk at twilight instead, but it is what it is. I'll do some twilight walks later on in the week or next week. This is the Manu Life Center on the right. And on the left is Holt Renfrew, which is a large high-end Canadian department store. They've recently got some competition in a new Nordstrom at the Eaton Center. And part of the bay turned into Saks Fifth Avenue. There used to be another high-end retailer called Bretton's. I don't really know what happened to them, but I remember they opened a location in Sherway Mall a long time ago. And rising up here at the corner of Bloor and Young is the one. That would be the southwest corner. And that will be a 94-story, 1110-foot condominium with retail at the base. In fact, there's rumored to be a flagship Apple store moving into the base. Norman Foster. is the architect. So it will surpass One Bloor East, which is just across the street. And I think it's sort of in a battle with One Bloor, which is all the way at the south end of Young, which is also in line to be similar height. And that one is just getting underway. So the city of Toronto actually only has one super tall, if you include the CN Tower, and no super tall buildings if you don't. And pretty soon we'll have two. It's a bit weird for a city with so many skyscrapers and high rises not to have any super talls. And those would be buildings that are over 300 meters or a thousand feet in height. And this is the intersection of Young and Bloor. There's currently a scramble crossing. And there's Nordstrom Rack. And someone commented in the last video I did where I went down Young Street why I always walk down the east side and never the west side. I don't think that's entirely true, but here we go anyways. I'll stay on the west side at least until I get to Isabella. There used to be a Sunrise Records right here. And on this corner, was Stollery's. It was a retailer that had been in Yorkville forever. And a lot of people felt that that building should have had heritage status, but it didn't. And the developer was quick to demolish it when they started building the one. 
there's a pretty big uproar over that, but at the end of the day, the building did not have any type of protected status. And on the right here, there used to be a KFC, and a long time ago there was a Thai place called the Green Mango. And on the corner there used to be a Starbucks. That's the old Postal Station R, it looks like. Her legs so have to be cold. There's a fire truck way off in the distance there. There's a look down Charles Street. I think I did a walk along there a few weeks ago. So City Council recently voted on a motion to make Young Street more pedestrian friendly. And I think it'll be reduced to two lanes of traffic. I think it would be better off if it was just close to traffic. There's plenty of alternate routes if you're going north to south anyways. Shinyi Handmade Dumplings. That place is relatively new. And I forget what used to be next to that Popeyes, but vacant storefronts are popping up all over the place. And there's where I want to go, Isabella Street. See here if there's a break in traffic and a chance to cross. That's a look south. And now I have crossed over onto the east side of downtown. And here we go, Isabella Street. Certainly not the best surface to be walking along. Here's the Artful Dodger Pub. Closed <laughs> for a few weeks. Sadly, it's going to be longer than that. And this here is Iwa. They have a huge backyard patio. That's a Korean style pub. And this here is George Hislop Park. And to the south, I'm trying to think of the name. I think that's, I can't see the sign. I think that's Jewison Park. And then behind that is James Canning Gardens Park. So it's three of these sort of long, narrow parks that connect Charles Street just to the north of here down to Dundonald Street to the south where you can enter Wellesley Subway Station. And this nice old building here is the Ontario Confederation of University Faculty Associations.
looks kind of like a frat house. And here we have the Children Aid Society of Toronto. I think they offer various protective services for children and youths. And I'm not sure what's going on with this building here, but there seems to be curtains in the windows and some lights on. And here, It's a very interesting old house. This one goes back to 1860. I've walked by it before. It's the Jared Sessions house, but I don't know who that is or what his significance was. He was probably the original homeowner. Often these older properties are named after the person who built or originally owned the home a long time ago. But Isabel Street is mostly these mid and high rise apartments. But I thought it would be interesting to check it out. They have a studio, one and two bedroom for rent. So coming up is Church Street. So this would be the Church Wellesley Village area. There's a look back to the west. The sky's kind of lighting up in that direction. Maybe I'm walking in the wrong direction. And there's definitely not a lot of people out, but with these restrictions and this rather extreme cold, can't imagine people being too eager to jump outside. So here is church. Let's look down into the village. And there's Church Street Espresso. I had a drink and a snack on the patio in the summer. Back in those good old days where we were allowed to do things like that. There's a lot of 60s and 70s there's apartment buildings on the street, that's for sure. And Isabel Street is a little under a kilometer in length. It actually comes to an end, not at Jarvis Street up ahead here, but at the next major intersection at Sherburn. So here we go, or here we go, here we go, Jarvis Street.
and just to the north here, Jarvis turns into Ted Rogers Way, and then on the right, it branches off into Mount Pleasant Road. There's a look to the south, and the Keg Mansion is just off in the distance there. And a look north. I'm just kind of curious about the Casey house here. I've seen this property a number of times. All right, it dates back to 1875. I guess you can pause and read that if you're interested in more about that particular heritage property. Looks like there's a number of people on the side of the street, so maybe I'll cross over. And this is Huntley Street. And just on the left here, it's a rather neat building. This is the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario. And right here is Fraser College. That's an alternative and adult learning high school. And that building says Midtown Apartments. At one point, this used to be known as Uptown. And later on it became Midtown, and now it's just part of Downtown. And I do not know how to pronounce that first word. Monsignor Fraser College Community Computer Center. I think it's run by the Toronto Catholic School Board. And they have six different campuses. Sorry for all the crunching. Someone unloaded a lot of salt out of the sidewalk here. And here's Sherburn Street. and the Isabella Hotel and Suites. I'll have to look this up on TripAdvisor. Don't really know anything about it, but they do have a Gabby's. That's the chain that had a location closed that I showed earlier. There's a look south, down Sherburn. And just up ahead here is the James Cooper House. 
It should be about half a block from here. Here's a look in towards St. Jamestown. So just to the north of here is Bloor Street East. But maybe I'll wander down Linden Street here and kind of snake my way back up. And this is the James Cooper house. And what's interesting about this is it dates back to 1881 and James Cooper was a bit of a shoe tycoon. That's how he made his fortune. And a developer, Tridel, purchased this property and in 2008 they moved the house. They moved it five feet to the south and 20 feet to the east. And it was the heaviest ever relocation of a structure in Canada. I think that was done to accommodate their condominium design. And it cost somewhere around a million dollars to do that. Although it's likely some of the condos in that building sold for a million dollars. I'm just going to wander down Linden here. So this is the other side of Fraser Collegiate, or Fraser Collegiate, not sure which one it is. Here's some nice older homes. Sorry if the camera drifted there for a second. I just had a phone call coming in. I wanted to make sure it wasn't anything important. So this is Huntley Street. And that's the eastern side of the Evil Empire, Rogers Telecommunications Headquarters. These look to be townhomes. 
It's kind of interesting. They're part of the Rogers complex. Maybe they're actually offices. There's some of the older homes across the street. And here is Selby Street. I have never been along here. And it looks kind of interesting. I'm just going to check out this park space here. So this would be Mount Pleasant Road, very near the start of it. All right, now I'm just gonna head back to Selby Street and then I will pop into Shermerin Station. I'm actually thinking of doing a live stream right after recording this, so maybe I'll just walk through the station to the other side. There's a no frills supermarket. I don't think this is going to be a particularly long live stream, given the temperature, but it's Friday evening. Might as well do something before I go home. I'll have to pick up some dinner as well. A condo, a community, a culture, a way of life. Those are some lofty goals set out by that developer or false promises. Take your pick. Now I'm going north up the west side of Sherburn again and I'm going to pop into Sherburn Station and head over to the Glen Road exit. Or rather than that, maybe I'll just head over that way on Bloor Street. At least then I won't have to unnecessarily go indoors. So here we go, back to Blue Street. There's the entrance to Sherburn Station.
There won't be a whole lot to see this way, but I'll finish up with a nice view off the bridge, I guess, that goes over the Rosedale Ravine. And that's where I started a video the other week that went through the Rosedale neighborhood, which is right over there. So this is the Glen Road exit for Sherman Station coming up. And this is Rosedale Valley Road. I'm currently standing over. Let's look to the east, that'll head over to Bayview Avenue. And feel this bridge has a nice bounce to it. It's definitely moving. There's a look to the west, and that's towards Yorkville, where this all began. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. Uh, there are links to my Instagram down below and my Patreon if you wish to support the channel. You can also check out channel memberships on the YouTube page itself. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. And I shall catch you on the next one.